Greetings. What if I told you that the United States had the opportunity, as recently as 2015, to make a series of very common sense decisions that would have enabled it to maintain economic dominance for another few decades to come? This has not been covered in the news, and you'll have to do some investigative work to even find the clues that would reveal this situation and how huge of an opportunity the United States missed. But fortunately, in this video, I'm going to detail this for you and you will see the complete picture of what has transpired. Now, this chart is the trade balance between the United States and the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC. Now, OPEC comprises a lot of unsavory countries such as Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Venezuela, and also Iraq, both before and after the U.S. invasion of Iraq. In general, these are all the petroleum exporters that are not democracies. Countries like Russia are not members of OPEC, nor are the democracies of the Americas such as Canada, Mexico, or Brazil, but OPEC is the bulk of all oil exports in the world. And the United States had a trade deficit with OPEC in the 1980s and 90s. And that did not start to become huge until the price of oil rose a lot. And if you recall, 2007, 8, and 9 were a time when oil was expensive. And the U.S. was importing so much oil that there were worries, oh, is this going to bankrupt us? And there was talk of peak oil and things like that. And even after the correction of 2008 and 9, oil prices again were expensive through 2014 until they collapsed by around 2015. And then, for the first time in many decades, the United States had a trade surplus with OPEC. So the entirety of the time between 1985 to 2015 was one of a trade deficit. And only in 2015 did the United States have a trade surplus with OPEC because the power of U.S. ingenuity created the hydraulic fracturing revolution and that caused a lot of horizontal drilling to be possible in just two states, North Dakota and Texas, and therefore that produced enough oil to increase the total oil production of the world by just 3%, just 3%, and that was enough to shatter the price of oil. The price of oil fell by half, from $110 a barrel down to $50 or $55 a barrel on average. That is how elastic the price was, just a 3% increase in oil supply, generated by just two states of one country, two states of the United States, North Dakota and Texas, caused enough of an increase to crush the oil price of all oil worldwide. And the U.S. was not only paying half as much for each barrel of oil it imported, it also imported a lot fewer barrels because the United States was producing its own oil. So import dollars went down hugely and went from negative to positive. Now U.S. is a net exporter of petroleum products because of all the refining done in the United States. Now, this chart is not indexed per GDP. Otherwise, this fall would be somewhat less dramatic than it appears in this non-indexed chart. But nonetheless, a surplus is a surplus, and the U.S. was in a surplus for the first time in many decades. And all the fear of peak oil went away, and all websites that were screaming about peak oil and how it would arrive someday now went away. And I made a very famous prediction that you'll see in this video up in this tile up here of how I predicted this would happen years before it did. I said in early 2011 that the price of oil would eventually fall below 70 and never get above $70 a barrel ever again, no matter how much money is printed, because the strength of the modern technological medium creates these mitigations to supply shortages faster and faster and faster. So the U.S. has a trade surplus with OPEC. That should be fantastic, should it not? Well, the U.S. missed this opportunity, and for that we go to a second chart. This chart is from Calculated Risk Blog, and it is the total U.S. trade deficit as separated by oil and non-oil. It goes from 1998 to present, and this too is not indexed to GDP, which would be a more accurate type of chart to present rather than absolute dollars, but such as it is, it is absolute dollars of trade deficit. Blue is total trade deficit, as you can see from the legend on the top. Red is trade deficit without oil, and black is petroleum, of course. And there was a time when petroleum was a large part of the entire trade deficit, 2008, 9, as you could see. It was very high, even through 2013 and 14. And then that fracking revolution that we saw in the earlier chart got us to a trade surplus with OPEC 
and eventually to a trade surplus on all oil products. Remember that a trade surplus with OPEC is only a subset of U.S. total oil imports because the U.S. also imports from Canada and Mexico, which are friendly countries and obviously not problematic like OPEC. So this oil trade deficit went away. Shouldn't our total trade deficit have gone down? Well, no, it didn't. The red, the trade deficit X petroleum, started to rise in exact tandem with this oil trade deficit. And now that we are in oil surplus, more or less, the non-oil trade deficit, which is almost entirely with one country, China, is the entirety of the trade deficit. And it keeps rising. In fact, during this coronavirus crisis, it rose even more. And now our trade deficit with all countries, which is to say mostly with China, is about $70 billion per month. Even though we got out of oil imports, we got a tremendous get out of jail for free card. We did not use that opportunity to reduce our total trade deficit or even keep the red line fixed, in which case our total trade deficit, the blue line would still be over here, a much smaller amount than what it is today. All the money we were not sending to oil exporting countries is now being sent just to China. Now, China also benefited from the U.S. making world oil prices lower as well. So China's trade surplus rose a lot from two fronts. The U.S. started buying from China instead of buying oil from oil exporting countries. And China was paying less for imported oil. China still imports a huge amount of oil, but it's paying only half as much as it used to before the price decline. How did the United States allow this to happen? Had the United States made different decisions over here and kept the non-petroleum trade deficit about the same, then the total trade deficit would be much, much less, and the U.S. would be on much stronger footing for maintaining economic dominance for quite a bit longer. Instead, policy negligence has caused this problem to perpetuate and for the U.S. to squander this once-in-a-generation opportunity that it had. And for that, we go to a third chart. This is a chart of 2020 trade surplus or trade deficit between all countries, not necessarily U.S. in relation to China, but all countries combined. And you can click over a country to see whether it has a trade surplus or trade deficit. U.S. trade deficit is minus 4.66% of GDP. That means the amount that the U.S. imports in excess of what it exports is 4.66% of total U.S. GDP. That is quite bad. Whereas China is plus 3.63% of GDP. It exports more than it imports to the tune of 3.63% of its GDP. Now, these are the two largest economies of the world by far. The distance between number two and number three is a lot. And these two countries are ultimately what matter in terms of which country is going to be dominant in the world in the near future. And the U.S. has a massive trade deficit while China has a trade surplus. And this causes all types of other ripple effects. One problem in modern macroeconomics is that they don't really know how to calculate the multiplier effects of a trade deficit versus a trade surplus. But there's all kinds of other subjective measures and secondary measures that indicate having a trade surplus is a significant multiplier effect on a country's financial situation. And therefore, having a trade deficit is also a significant negative multiplier effect. Now, the U.S. was so prosperous that it could go for years and years and decades with a very large trade deficit, but nothing like that can last forever when it is a substantial percentage of the U.S. economy. The reason I bring this up is that oil price revolution, the fracking revolution, gave the United States a huge opportunity to either zero out or make small its trade deficit. U.S. could sustain with just a 1% trade deficit had it not allowed the non-oil trade deficit to take the place of the oil trade deficit as though the fracking revolution had never occurred. And this is not good news at all. And this can eventually cause a shifting in the tectonic plates of the world economy just because a certain status quo can persist for a very long time, but when it corrects, it corrects quickly. This large of a trade deficit versus China having a trade surplus over such a large economy is really something else. It's going to be one of the dominant economic stories of the 2020s and when the resorting occurs, it won't really look very good for the United States and other Western countries who also have trade deficits with China. So this is something to think about. All of these links will be in the description box below. If you found this video informative, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and thank you very much for watching.